Hey guys, this is a free video on applications of rational expressions, and in this video I'll just be talking about distance, rate, and time problems. As a reminder, pause the video and try the examples at your own pace. Always feel free to pause the video um, if you need a little extra time to read something over or write it down. Um, for these videos, so these are specifically word problems that have to do with the class that I'm teaching. But if there's some other problems that you'd like to see, you can always comment with them, and if I have time, I, I might be able to make a video for that. So um, for the types of problems that we're going to be looking at, so we're going to be using the distance formula. Um, so I've got d for distance, r for rate or speed, and then time. So in our problems, we're usually going to be using time as hours. So that's just some context. And something to notice with this, so you can actually kind of rearrange this formula around. So um, if I take, if I wanted to solve this formula for r, what would I do? Well, I would just divide by t, and so then I'd get r equals d over t. Um, and then if I wanted to solve for t, so if I have d equals rt, so if I wanted to solve for t, I would just divide by r, and then I'd get t equals d over r. So this is just kind of pointing out that we can we can kind of view the distance formula in a couple different ways. Um, so that's that's all I want to say with that. So I did type these out just to make it a little bit easier to read, and these are all in the guided notes if you have them. So this is a very typical type of distance rate and time problem um, for for our class. So a boat travels 30 miles downstream in the same time that it travels 20 minutes upstream. The current of the river is five miles per hour. How fast would the boat travel in still water? So first of all, um, when you're thinking about this, so just think about how kind of water usually works, um, like when you're on a river. Um, there's definitely like a faster, you know, when you're going with the current, right, it goes a lot faster than if you're trying to go against the current. So that's kind of what this is getting at. And so it's saying, you know, if the current is this, if there was no current, um, then that would be still water. So th that's the speed that we're interested in. So how fast is the, ba the boat going if there is no current? So. Um, there's a few things here to kind of un unpack, so we want to um, kind of, I guess, organize this information in a better way. So I want to think about going upstream versus downstream, and I want to think about just the distance, rate, and time in each of these situations. So um, I'm going to have my distance, so D for distance, R for rate and t for time. Okay, so some of this we can fill in pretty easily, right? So um, 30 miles downstream, so that would be my distance downstream versus 20 miles upstream, right? And then we have the current of the river is five miles per hour. How fast would the boat travel in still water? So now we have to kind of think about what would actually the speed of this boat be? So just as a kind of note here, so the speed in this case so it's going to be always the speed of the boat in still water. So maybe I'll say the speed in still water. And then plus or minus the speed of the current. So this plus or minus, this has to do with whether you're going upstream or downstream. So if you're going downstream, so you can see you went farther, right? So that means that you're actually going faster. So whatever my speed is then um, in still water, which sign would I choose to make this actually go faster, plus or minus? It would be plus, right? So this would be the speed of the still water plus the speed of the current, while the going upstream, so that would be this speed in still water minus the speed of the current. So in this case, the current kind of takes away from how fast you can go. So knowing this, now we actually have um, kind of our, our variable that we can work with here. We're trying to figure out how fast would the boat travel in still water, right? In this problem, this is our unknown. So this is going to be our x in this case. We know what the current is, right? So this is going to be x plus or minus 5. So now it's just a matter of deciding which one to put in for the rate for both of these. So we said that going upstream is going to take us more time. So here my rate is going to be x minus 5. So it's whatever that speed in still water is, but I'm going a little bit slower because I'm going against the current. And then the other way, um, so this will be x plus 5 so that I, I get the benefit of the current. So this will be faster. All right, and so now 
we're almost there. I know this seems like a lot, but this is a really good way to organize yourself. So now we have to think about time. What do we know about time in this problem? Well, it says that we've got the same time. So this is actually equal for both of these. So um, if I can set kind of this up, um, and then I can take my two times equal to one another. Well, this is where this whole thing actually comes into play. So I know that time can equal D over R. So I can actually just use that then. So this is D over R. I can kind of use this um, and put this in place for time. So I've got 20 over X minus five and 30 over X plus five. And so what I know is that these two things have to be equal for one another. So now I've actually kind of got everything that I need to solve this problem. So let me clear some space. And so now this part here, I'm just gonna take these two pieces and set them equal to one another because we know that time is equal in this. And now you can see kind of what we have here. So we can actually solve this. It's, it's just kind of like a, it's almost like a proportion and we can solve this by cross multiplying. So the setup for this then will be 20 times X plus five equals 30 times X minus five. So now we can just solve that as usual. So this is 20 X plus 100 equals 30 X minus 150. So now if I go ahead and I solve for X, so let's see, I'm gonna add 150 to this side and I'm gonna subtract 20 X from this side. So now I've got 250 equals 10 X, which should be an X there, divide both sides by 10. So I get X equals 25. So um, remember, what did X actually stand for? So that was the speed in still water. So this would be 25 miles per hour in still water. So if there was no current, that's how fast the boat is actually going. Okay, so a lot of details there. Hopefully you wrote them all down. They're very helpful. Um, so I have now a very similar problem. Um, so this is now a boat that is just going um, much slower. So I'm actually telling you in this problem. So 16 miles downstream in the same time it can travel 12 minutes upstream. In still water, the boat can travel six miles per hour. So this boat's not, maybe it's like going pretty slow, I guess, compared to the last one. Um, so think about this. Remember we said that speed is going to be equal to the still water speed plus or minus um, the speed of the current. So in this problem, we know the still water and you're being asked to find the speed of the current. So the setup is very similar to the last one. Um, so go ahead and try to set this up and figure out where X goes and all that and then hit play when you're ready. So once again, um, so I'm gonna have this table just kind of comparing my downstream to my upstream I'm gonna to try to give myself a little more room this time. So I've got my distance, my rate, and my time. So my distance is time. So it's 16 miles downstream and 12 miles upstream. And then I'm told that in still water, the boat can travel six miles per hour and I wanna know what is the speed of the current. So in this case, um, with my still water being six miles per hour and I wanna know what the speed of the current is, this is gonna be modeled by six plus or minus X, where X is now gonna be the current, and it's de the equation is dependent on which direction we're going. So downstream, we're going faster, so this is gonna be six plus X to go faster, and then six minus X to go slower. And so then it's gonna be very similar again. Um, so I'm gonna have just 16 divided by six plus X, and 12 divided by six minus X to kind of set this all up. And then just like the last one, so then I can just set those two pieces equal to one another. And so now I'll go ahead and just work on solving it. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll cross multiply and I'll show you all the steps. And so for this one, um, so 
this day there must not be much, much of a current, um, but you kind of get the idea here. So here it's, uh, I got this decimal. Um, if you're in my class, you won't usually get decimals like this. You'll get um, whole numbers where this will work out. So I, I kind of just put this together at the last minute. Um, but this is kind of the idea. So you've got kind of the steps for it. So um, just one other way you could see this would be with planes. Um, and it's still the same idea. So if you just think about wind and air. So this is talking about a plane traveling 550 miles with the wind. In the same amount of time, it travels 375 miles against the wind. Um, so if the wind is blowing at a speed of 25 miles per hour, what is the speed of the plane when there is no wind? So um, if you think about this, so speed in this case is going to be speed with no wind and then plus or minus the speed with wind. Um, so if you're flying against the wind, then you're going to go slower. And if you're flying with the wind, then you're going to go faster. So with that in mind, you might kind of have a guess of how to set all of this up. Um, so I would say try to set this up and then hit play when you're ready. So um, now I'm going to classify everything as so against the wind and then with the wind. And same setup, so I've got distance, I'm gonna have my rate, and I'll extend this, I'll have my time. So um, I go, let's see, 550 miles with the wind, 375 against, and then it says the wind is blowing at a speed of 25 miles per hour, so what is the speed of the plane when there is, is no wind? So this part here, we've got the speed with no wind. We don't know what that is, so that's x. So this is going to be x plus or minus 25, depending on which direction we're going. So with the wind, I should be going much faster. So this will be x plus 25, and then here this will be x minus 25. And so then again, I can set it up the same way. So I've got 375 over x minus 25, and then I've got uh, 550 over x plus 25 and so that I can just set those pieces uh, equal to one another again and then this will equal so this equals this side so 550 over x plus 25 okay so now to solve this guy I can just use my little shortcut where I, I kind of multiply down those diagonals so I've got 375 times x plus 25. This will be equal to 550 times x minus 25. So then I can distribute. So this is 375x plus 9,375. And that's going to equal 550x minus this crazy number, um, 13,750. Oops, and I dropped the x, my bad. Okay, 550x minus 13,750. Okay, so now um, I'm, I'm gonna jump just a little bit ahead here um, because I'm running out of space. So I'm gonna just subtract the 375 over here and I'm gonna add this 13,750 to the other side. So then that's gonna give me 175x will ultimately equal 23,125. And so then if I divide both of those by 175, in this case, I end up getting a decimal, so I get like 132.14. And then, let's see, the original question said, what was the speed of the plane when there is no wind? So this would be the, the speed with no wind, so this would be miles per hour. So 132.14 miles per hour. And so if you found this helpful, please consider liking this video or commenting with questions, or subscribe and share with a friend. And otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next video.